You're listening to the Ento Podcast, and I'm your host, Ross. So thanks so much for tuning in, really appreciate you giving me your time. I know there's lots of other podcasts you could be listening to on your morning commute or down the gym or wherever you're listening to me today. So today's show, again, is another bio show, and this episode we're going to be looking at RNA, uh, Robert Nathan Allen. But before we jump into the show, just want to say hi to a couple of the latest followers. If you'd like to go over to the entopodcast.co.uk and leave a comment there, or head on over to Facebook and leave a comment there and like us, then you could be hearing your name on in one of the next shows. This episode is a hi to Josh Kraut. Cole Schmede. So thanks so much, guys. Thanks for liking the show. Okay, as I was saying, this is going to be a show on RNA, uh, or Robin Nathan Allen, who's better known as RNA. And if you haven't heard of RNA or Robert, then after today's show, I really want you to go and sit on the naughty step, especially if you're a US listener. For me, being outside the US, RNA's got to be one of the, the, the biggest spokespeople, so most active spokespeople out there. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, there are, there are people who've been doing this longer than RNA has, and there's been people who've got more publicity but started sooner than he has as well. But RNA's been able to use the, the phrase sort of animal insects and entomology loud and proud ever since he sort of read about it in the, the UN report. So a quick background, right? he's uh, worked or started Little Herds, and he's worked for Aspire Foods, co-founded Grub Tubs, and he's also involved in the North American Coalition for Insect Agriculture. So let's start at the beginning, Little Herds. Little Herds is an educational non-profit based in Austin, Texas. They teach kids about insects being a efficient resource, being nutritious and delicious food, or used as feed. So they go through the experimental steam-based programs. They do family-friendly events, I say publicly act as an outreach, and they've partnered with educators, universities, and other organisations. People out there who don't know what a a STEAM-based programme is, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Maths. So Little Herds, their mission is to educate and empower communities, both locally and globally, and support and promote the use of insects as food and feed as an environmentally sound and economically viable source of nutrition. So they can be found at littleherds.org, and I'll put links in the the show notes for all of these. So a quick row we'll we'll have a look at is uh, Aspire Foods, or the Aspire Food Group. And they manufacture a variety of products made from crickets. They're based in the US and in Ghana, in the US, they raise food-grade crickets on a commercial scale. Uh, they're actively working to normalise the consumption of insects in the, the Western world, which I think most of us, I'm hoping everyone who's listening to, to this is as well. But they come at it from a slightly different angle. So they use um, robotics and data collection in their cricket farms in the US, and it's enabled them to automate the feeding, heating of the, the livestock, and using the data that they've gathered, that's been able to help them build autonomous robotic systems so that they can farm the insects from hatch to harvest. It's all proprietary technology and it enables rapid and high fidelity integration of farming techniques resulting in process, standardization and farm modularity. That basically means that they can build a farm anywhere and consistently provide reliable low-cost yields. So in Ghana, they commercially farm palm weevil larvae, and they run a program which empowers the the rural farmers to raise palm weevils locally. This all started uh, when they were travelling around southern Thailand, and they learned the basics of palm weevil larva farming from Thai farmers. And later they used the the knowledge that they got and their precision farming principles, and adapted the Thai farming techniques uh, so that it was more suitable for the, the local African species. And that's resulted in... Um, a lowering of costs and increasing the supply of palm weevil larvae that they're able to get. Previously, the locals who'd been able to get hold of the palm weevil larvae had had to harvest them from the wild. Aspire also have a, a brand, Akata. So it's through their Akata brand that they sell the, the whole dried crickets. Uh, they sell them as powdered and they also do a range of granola. But the biggest news, I suppose, would be uh, back in March when they announced that they'd acquired EXO. So EXO was started by a couple of guys out of Brown University, and they, like a lot of people, read read the UN report, got a box of, or ordered some crickets online, and started making protein bars. 
So within a sort of a year, they'd raised, uh, I think it was over a million, um, they've had backers, uh, Tim Ferriss well, was one of their back, probably still is one of their backers. I can't remember whether they were the first or they were definitely sort of one of the first cricket bars around. So it'll be interesting to see how Agatha sort of move with the, the XO name, whether they keep the name, incorporate their, to sort of lose their name, um, and start pushing things through and start expanding on the XO range, sort of start moving their granolas across and getting a few more sort of cricket bar flavours through it, but just putting it through uh, XO instead of Akita. So started in Austin, Texas, Grub Tubs Inc. is a new take on food waste, supporting family farms across Texas by turning food waste into economical animal feed. Grub Tubs collects food from restaurants before it ends up in a landfill and uses it to help local farmers by turning it into sustainable animal feed. So their process starts in the kitchen and any leftover food, leftover? Leftover food that's collected is stored in their um, patented airtight sterilised tubs. They then have a, some means of collecting these tubs. They're airtight so it preserves the nutrients for the, the animal feed. The tubs are then taken to a processing plant on the farm and the guys use black soldier fly to eat the waste, then sort of produce the the larvae that uses the, the animal feed, presuming they'll also have the the frass that they'll be selling on as a um, a compost or a, a soil nutrient as well. Moving on to the North American Coalition for Insect Agriculture, or NAICS. RNA is the chairman. The North American Coalition for Insect Agriculture began in 2016 when around 50 stakeholders in the insect food and feed industry met at the uh, Eating Insects Detroit event. They started out being called the North American Edible Insect Coalition through 2016-17. They then elected or nominated and elected a board of directors um, that was done from uh, public and by the the, uh, some of the educators, researchers and entrepreneurs in the bug ag movement and with the recent advances for the potential use of insects beyond just food products the board like to be able to provide a more accurate information for the public assist in new avenues of research provide resources for the market and for people who are new joining the market one thing I've noticed in the, the three, four years that I've been doing this is that there's the last 2018 there was a lot of interest in it and a lot of new companies coming in in the uk it's hard to find any information but the way that the the naics have got it is you join one of their membership or you join their memberships depending on the membership level you get there's a lot of information within their their portal that'll help you guys produce your products and get them to market. So they've got various membership levels. You've got a, there's a student, there's a high level student, there's an individual, non-industry organization, an industry individual, and then an industry company. All different price points. Put a show, I'll put a show note. I'll put a link in the show notes. I'll read some of the benefits that you get by joining their group. You get the, the food safety information. There's insect farming guidance. You get access to the research. There's the state of the market reports. There's a they even do a HACCP plan tutorial uh, as well as a, an open forum. Again, go to their website, have a look through. Some of these benefits are level orientated, and some are open to all levels. But that's it for today's show. So thanks for listening. Just a quick show, a few pointers on sort of what RNA's done, what these guys at the NACIA are doing. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you head over to iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast, click the subscribe button, leave us a comment, leave us or head on over to Facebook, like the Facebook page, and again, leave us a comment there. There's going to be links to everything that I've mentioned in the show notes, along with some of the other uh, videos and things that RNA's done. But that's it for today's show. This is Ross saying, ta for now. Thanks so much for listening to the Ento Podcast. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit theentopodcast.co.uk and on Facebook and Twitter at The Ento Podcast. We'll catch you next time.